everyone welcome back to the homestead i hope you're doing well today today's video is going to be another farm to table meal uh, before we get to that though i want to say a real big thank you to all of you who spent time to leave comments under last week's video giving gardening advice there were so many great ideas i really enjoyed reading through the comments and getting inspired by all of the great comments that you guys left if you missed last week's video, please check it out and make sure you read the comments because there's some really great gardening advice from experienced gardeners in the comments under that video. So our farm to table meal today is gonna include eggs, which we don't have as many coming in right now because we still have some sitting birds. There's a couple muscovies, um, I think another duck gone broody. I don't think we have any chickens gone broody yet, uh, but we do have enough eggs that I was able to set aside a dozen a few days ago. Uh, so that we can boil them. As many of you probably know, fresh eggs are notorious for not peeling well at all. So I like to set some eggs aside for a few days at least uh, before I boil them. We're gonna make what I call angeled eggs. <laughs> it's very similar to deviled eggs, but we like to call them angeled eggs for fun. And then we're also gonna use some new potatoes from our first potato harvest, as well as some kohlrabi. There's some other vegetables that I thought of using that are really close. We've got some broccoli that's really close to being ready to harvest, as well as some cabbages that are getting nice heads on them. I didn't want to dig into those quite yet. I'm letting them get a little bit bigger. Before I go on, I do want to share real quick. We've got some new blooms in the garden. Actually, today is the first day for daylilies. I was so excited to come out this morning and see the Fragrant Returns reblooming daylily in bloom. It's so beautiful. It's a real pale yellow and it does bloom twice and it is fragrant. So I really love that one. We also have the hydrangeas behind me blooming. This is an Annabelle hydrangea. We've had it for a few years now and I never imagined that when it would finally bloom for the first time, it would do this. <laughs> it's just really, really beautiful. It's one of two hydrangeas that we have and it's just a real blessing. I'm enjoying it so much. We also have a bunch of squash blooming too. So I'm excited to hopefully have some squash here soon. We've got both uh, Raven, which is a green zucchini squash, as well as an early yellow straight neck. And so that's gonna be fun once we can add summer squash to our meals. So for angel eggs, you pretty much make them the same as you would make deviled eggs, but I don't use mayo. I like to use either some softened butter or sour cream if I have it on hand, and a little bit of pickle juice, and then just some salt. You can put a little mustard if you like that, a little pepper if you want, but that's it. I just make it really simple. So I mix all that into the yolks and then put them back into the white part of the egg. The potatoes I'm using today are just a red potato and it's actually from seed saved from last year's harvest. And let me tell you, these potatoes are a testimony to our creator's goodness and grace. I'm still learning how to get potatoes to store all the way through the winter and into the spring so that we can grow from our own harvest the next year. And so these potatoes, when we put them in the ground in March, they were so wrinkly and the plants that were coming off of them were a foot or more long. Honestly, I wasn't sure if they were gonna grow anything, <laughs> but we went ahead and planted them with their long plants. We pretty much just buried the potato and all of the plants that were coming off of them. And then we had an unexpected frost and I hadn't covered the bed. So all the first little plants ended up getting frost damage. Uh, so I'd pretty much given up on these potatoes, but I was so amazed this morning to go out and see that even though it's a little bit early for harvesting them, they are doing fantastic. I was able to get enough for this meal that I'm gonna make for our family of nine today. I'll probably let the plants go a little bit longer before I finish harvesting them, but I am just really, really thankful to the Father that we're getting any harvest at all. It's so amazing. So this year we also planted two other varieties of potatoes. One was just a purple potato that we had gotten organic from the store and that one's almost ready to harvest. It's got some blooms but it's the plants are still all green pretty much. So uh, with potatoes you want to make sure that they've bloomed and you usually wait till the plants start to die back and yellow and then they're usually ready to harvest. Uh, we also planted Kennebec. Some from seed that we saved from last year's harvest and then some from seed that I bought because I wanted to have a lot of those this year. And so we've got a whole bed of those and I'm really looking forward to harvesting those. Those are the ones that store the best. And so we'll harvest them probably not for another month or two and those will be our storage potatoes. 
So the kohlrabi I started from seed in the greenhouse late February and then those little plants were planted out late March into a bed that we had a row cover on so I could cover and uncover them depending on if we were going to have a frost or not. And those were ready to harvest a couple weeks ago and I still have a couple in the ground. The really cool thing about kohlrabi is it can save in cold storage for a couple few months. So I went ahead and actually harvested a few last week I think it was and have just been storing them in our cold box. If the days are getting really hot into the upper 80s it's best to just go ahead and harvest them and store them in cool storage uh, because they do start to get woody if you leave them out in the heat. Uh, but if you've never had kohlrabi it is so delicious. We really enjoy it. And all I do is chop it into little bite-sized pieces, steam it till tender, and then strain the water out and add butter and salt and a little pepper. So good. It's very creamy. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it, but kohlrabi has um, just got a really mild creamy flavor to it. And it is in the brassica family, so it's just filled with nutrition. So we grow it in the spring. That's when it does best for us here in Missouri, but we also try and grow it in the fall as well. I don't start the seeds until usually mid to late September because we can have really hot days all the way to the end of September. Um, so I typically will start the kohlrabi in a full shade spot and seed trays. I usually have to keep them covered to keep the bugs off of them as well. And then those can go out in the garden usually early October into a bed that can be covered. And our fall crop for kohlrabi is a little bit more sparse. <laughs> Sometimes we don't get any at all. It doesn't mature quick enough before it gets too cold. But I usually try anyway because we just love it so much. So today we're actually going to be planting some bush beans where the kohlrabi just came out. There's still a couple little plants there but we're going to just go ahead and put some bush beans in and um, we'll harvest that kohlrabi before the bush bean plants get very big at all. And that's how I like to do it. I like to keep the beds full. Don't like to leave a bed empty. It will just end up covered with weeds and so we like to just pull one crop out and then put the next one right back in. Depending on the crop sometimes I'll add more compost first if it's a really heavy heavy feeding crop that's coming out then we'll add compost before we put the next crop in. We are planning on planting one last um, bit of potatoes. We've got some more of the just store-bought organic red potatoes that really want to grow. So we have a bed right off our patio that hopefully we're going to finish filling today and be able to plant those. And I think I actually hear them coming right now from the neighbor's house. Um, we've got some good friends and neighbors that are sharing some topsoil with us to fill the bed that we're hoping to plant our last potatoes in. So um, I think that's him coming right now. So thank you Burton family for sharing some of your beautifully screened topsoil with us. Now we can plant more potatoes. <laughs> you girls ready to help plant some more potatoes? Yeah. Good. We got the dirt all spread out in here so we're going to plant. These are just organic red potatoes from Walmart I believe. And after we get them planted we're going to put a, just a little layer of either our composted horse manure we just got or the composted goat manure. One or the other. Yep. On top of the yep. topsoil. Yay, yeah. here we go. Hey, Mommy, I buried my tail in. So we know Good them. job. All right, so I just laid them where they go, and the girls are going to dig the holes and bury them in there. Good job. Oh. Make sure you get it deep enough, a little deeper. Doing a great job. I'm doing all the potatoes. I'm basically doing all the potatoes. I'm doing this. So this bed is about an 8 by 4 ish <laughs> bed and so most of it's planted with potatoes but we have this one section here where I'm going to plant some pepper plants I think. So 
I decided to go ahead and make mashed potatoes with those potatoes and even though the garlic's not quite ready I did find one that was pretty close to ready so I um, chopped those up and added those to the potatoes that are almost done cooking ideally I know you're supposed to cure the garlic let it dry out for a few days before using but I went ahead and just used it fresh it is just a little harder to get out of the skin when it's fresh like that because the skin is still really thick and moist but it does still work so we're having garlic mashed potatoes and for the kohlrabi uh, I like to just peel the skin off sort of like you would peel apples for an apple pie and then I like to just cut them up into bite-sized chunks and then steam them drain them and add butter and salt Sound good? Yeah, sound good. We've got an egg peeling party going on. Joseph's peeling. Biddle's peeling. You just went through the sprinkler because it's hot outside, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and Abby's peeling. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. Is that good? Mm -hmm. Hey guys, you ready for a farm to table lunch? Yeah. It's ready. Right. <laughs> They've been trying to find the most composted of this goat manure out here. It's still still a bit fresh, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this was stuff that we got a couple months ago and had been sitting for five years they said but there's still really fresh chunks in it so they're painstakingly filling up buckets <laughs> to put in our new potato bed so thank you guys appreciate this uh, hot and smelly job you're doing <laughs> Last bucket. Nice. Now we just gotta water it in good and let those taters grow. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us on the homestead again today. Before we go, we have a couple thank yous to give. Thank you so much to Donna for these violin accessories. Got a new tuner for my violin, some rosin, and a cleaning cloth. Cool. And that's the really high quality rosin, huh? Yes. Which will be nice. You've been mm -hmm. dealing with some cheap rosin that doesn't work very well. Mm -hmm. So cool. You've been playing for about a year now, huh? A little over a year. Yeah. And just got a new, more professional violin since it's something you love and you want to keep doing, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Big blessing. Yes. And I want to say thank you to my loving husband who just yesterday got a whole trailer load of composted horse manure from a friend. It's just a huge lovely mound out in our main crop area now that's eventually going to go into grow beds in our main crop area or the greenhouse. So thank you so much my love for getting that for us. Super appreciate it. Before we go, if you have a crop that you thought was going to be a total failure and it ended up being a wonderful success, can you please share in the comments below? I think that would encourage people to know that sometimes something that looks like it's not going to make it or is totally failing can turn around and become a wonderful harvest. So don't give up on things and just keep trying, keep learning. Well, thank you so much as always to our patrons who make these videos possible. We appreciate you guys and love you so much. Until next time, we pay blessings over you and yours. And whatever you do, full high. Do it with your whole heart. Do it with your whole heart.